Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Underrail. In the last episode, we actually didn't do very much, did we? We explored the area which had the Minecracker sledgehammer in it and managed to retrieve it without anywhere near the trouble we had earlier. It helped that we just got rid of our psionic powers. We didn't have to worry about being interrupted by the Psy Beetles and take a bunch of damage for free that way. We then came over to Oculus in order to talk with Synthet down below about Transfinity again, since it was hinted that we could get his helmet, after all, if we offered him juice. Required us watching the Transfiguration, which is the lunatics down below attempting to reach up and touch the Oculus, which results in the Oculus lashing out at them with electrical discharges. Something we should probably talk to Constantine Const about. <coughs> But we also were able to give him the juice, and he vanished when he was hit by the Oculus. And at the very end of the video, when I had teleported to our home to do some crafting, we found a bag, and that bag contained a gem for the helmet. I haven't put the gem in the helmet, I figured we'd do that together at some point. So it's sitting up there in the locker, as I showed earlier. I totally meant to actually put it in the helmet, I don't know why I didn't. Just, I just didn't. I was, I was in the mood to sell to the merchants, that, that must have been it. In any case, I also had promised we would start the Oculus quest line, something I have never done. So I think we'll go ahead and get that started now. First, let's have something to eat. <coughs> oh my goodness. All right, and let's talk with uh, Azif. Yes. Hey, aren't you worried about the lunatics underneath the Oculus? Not in the slightest. Even if they could circumvent the electronic defense system somehow, getting access to Oculus is impossible. With a courteous nigh. Conversely, their trips into certain death provide us with some viable information regarding the nature of their lunacy. The fact that they can perceive Oculus, or certain aspects of it, is not something that should be ignored. We've been noticing for years that many of them tend to be drawn to sources of great stomach energy, but how exactly all that is arranged in their disranged minds you mean a mystery still. It is up to us to observe. I've talked with one of the lunatics beneath the Oculus, a psychokinetic wearing a purple and blue robe and illustrious gem on his forehead. Intriguing. Go on. He was talking a lot about lines, angles, forms. I also saw the ritual, or transformation, how they call it, through which they're trying to reach Transfinity. That's when they get fried. Transfinity. Transfinity. Beyondfinity. Beyond limits. Beyond the limits of this world, perhaps. So their attraction to the Oculus could have some religious basis. At least for him it does. It is not difficult to imagine that they're trying to reach this transfinite ideal of theirs through what they don't perceive as violent death, but rather some kind of transformation. Yes. He also told me how all of these lunatics have been summoned by the Oculus from every angle of Underrail, long before he came along, but their more direct methods couldn't help them reach Transfinity. Summoned. And angles again. How fascinating. Speaks of a very mathematical perception of reality. Is this lunatic still among the living, or did he share the fate of his predecessors? He's alive. Excellent. I'll keep a closer eye on him. Good luck with that! These lunatics, there is some truth in what they're sensing, yes. However they might interpret it. I merely wish to distill it, Tim, and learn from it. That's fair. He wants to go down there and talk with them. Maybe there's something he... something he missed. But good luck talking with Synthetic. He's, uh... Transfinitied at this point. Now, Azif, tell me about that assignment. There lived a man 
and it could be that he still lives, named Wit Nosek. A long time ago, he used to work for Biocorp, the old Biocorp, before Underworld Protectorate takeover, way before. He worked on a project called The Ark. The exact details of the project are unknown to me, but I do know it was related to some matter of life longevity research. What I do know is that near the end of his time with Biocorp, he made a major breakthrough in his research. Unfortunately, those were chaotic times, and he ended up not sharing these results with his colleagues before he fled from the organization. I need to know what these results were, and I suspect that Wit is the only man that can help us with that. I don't know where he is, or if he's alive at all, so getting this information will surely not be easy. You will have our knowledge database to help you in your investigation, though, so I suggest you start there. You can access it through a console in the geopolitical room, near the holographic map. Alright, I'll see you later, Azif. It just occurs to me, right? We have seen someone who's lived quite a long period of time. Multiple people. If we go with no spoilers, that would be Urza, uh, Ezra from Southgate Station and the gentleman in the Junkyard Depot A who was experimented upon with the mutagen. Both of which have lived for hundreds of years, unchanged. Spoiler-wise, we also know that the dude has lived far longer than they have, or at least an equal amount of time as well. If Wit Nosek worked in Hollow Earth, it's conceivable that he too benefited from whatever the dude benefited from while working down there. Well, let's talk with Abram and all the other people about Wit. Maybe they know a little bit of it. Actually, before we do that, let's access the computer console. Now, we have a key card here that gives us access to rank 3 information that we took off Azif. We'll take a peek at it in a bit. First, let's look at what they have here so far. Personal files? Oh, wow. So, I don't think we've read about any of these people, have we? Oh, man. There's quite a few of them here. Uh, I would love to read about everyone. Honestly, but viewer, I'm still very sick with COVID. My cough is still bad, so we'll read a little bit of these people, but not everything. Let's uh, let's read about some of the free drone folks. Marcella Green. Full name: Marcella Green. Position: Free Drone South Underrail Cell Leader until disappearance. Place of birth: South Underrail. Location unknown. Age between 25 and 35. Current residents unknown. Last known residents, Free Drones under passage base. Marcella Green was one of the three leaders of the Free Drones primary cell in South Underrail, alongside Corbin Trenton and Alvin Bate, until her sudden disappearance. Little information on her life before joining the Free Drones exists. She has no known family members in or outside of the movement, and neither her place of birth nor previous residences are known. She went missing approximately two months ago, and her current whereabouts are unknown. While there is no intel confirming or denying any assassination or apprehension attempts, uh, apprehension attempts were made by Underground Protectorate or otherwise, or that she has abandoned the movement for any reason, the first is the most likely of the scenarios, considering the current political climate. However, no bodies matching her description have been recovered as of yet. As of recently, a strange woman has been noticing visiting the Hanging Rat. Her visits are frequent, yet she never orders anything, and neither does she ever communicate with anyone. All she does is sit at a table and observe. This paragraph exists in this file only due to a single account mentioning her holding a Circle A pendant in her hand. Oh, interesting! It never occurred to me that it would be helped if you don't have pickpocket. That you could learn that she is from the free drones by accessing the Oculus information. Interesting. I like that there's another way for you to figure out who she is. Alvin Bate. Full name, Alvin Bate. Position, Free Drone South Underrail Cell Leader. Alvin Bate is one of the leaders of the Free Drone's primary cell in South Underrail, alongside Corbin Trenton and, formerly, Marcella Green. Little information on his life before joining the Free Drones exists. 
He is presumed to have arrived to South Underrail with the first free drones, that he is one of the original founders of this region's primary cell. His only known family member is his alleged daughter, Millibate, currently located in Dis, North Underrail. Oh man. I wonder if the Protectorate then forced him to do what he was doing or, th or they would kill his uh, daughter. Not everyone in the Protectorate is as evil as that. The leadership nor the soldiers. Most just want to do what they think is the right thing. But some would totally do that sort of thing and threaten him. And or actually torture and or kill his daughter if he did not betray the free drones. How about... Let's see. Do we know any of the other people? Edward Oldfield. This is the gentleman leading the expedition. Alias is none. Professor of Super Corporation History at the University of Dis. Age 52. Dis North Underrail. Wow. He's 52. He's four years older than me. Son of David and Amelia Oldfield, reformed Biocorp researchers. Earned his doctorate degree at the F Faculty of History, University of Dis, with a dissertation titled Social Political Context of the Biocorp Reformation Period, after which he started lecturing Biocorp History at the University of Dis. During a two-year hiatus following the dissolution of the reformed Biocorp, he focuses his work on the history of other supercorporations, primarily New Frontier Technologies. After the hiatus, he resumes lecturing at the renamed Department of History on the subject of supercorporation history, which he continued lecturing to to this day. He is currently leading an expedition to the Black Sea, most likely related to his research on NFT. Richard Briggs, the protectorate member of the order with the mechanical arm. Chief, Aegis, Chief of Aegis Incorporated, age 45. I'm older than him. Current residence, this North Underrail. He is one of the founders of Aegis Incorporated, a security company from North Underrail. Fought with Underrail Protectorate against Biocorp armed forces during the takeover of Dis. An exploding 30 millimeter round completely destroyed his left arm and caused him severe nerve damage from which he recovered for for several years. For which, from which he recovered for several years. Okay, then, yep. The arm has since been replaced with a cybernetic prosthesis. After his recuperation, he co-founded Agents Incorporated with Francis White, a notable businessman from North Underrail, and appointed himself Chief of Security. He is married to Jane Briggs, with whom he does not have any children. He is currently in South Underrail, and Agents Incorporated has been hired to protect an expedition to the Black Sea, which is led by Professor Edward Oldfield from the University of Dis. They have a little bit of information about Wit Nosek, so we'll start by reading this. Wit Nosek, profession geneticist. Alignment, Old Biocorp, Old Biocorp Renegade. Involved in Phenotype Dynamics, Project Arima, Project Arc, other various Biocorp projects. Wit was a second circle scientist, meaning that most of his personal and professional info was classified, resulting in very limited information we have on him today. Wit was dismissed from Arima by an unknown member of the first circle, he spent several years on minor projects before being reassigned to Project Ark. Following the Hollow Earth incident, Wit defected from Biocorp, and from that point in time his movements remain largely unknown. It is likely, though, that assuming he's still alive and scientifically active, he would choose Core City as his residence, where he would be out of reach of Biocorp and Protectorate while still having access to some scientific equipment. He must not be very happy that Protectorate is actually there then, huh? We might have warned him that someone's looking for him when we accessed that computer terminal. I think it sent some information back to Core City, but I can't remember. Hadron Tanner? Counselor. Southgate Station. No age for him. Hadron Tanner is one of the leaders of Southgate Station. He's widely considered to be the most influential man in the station, though it seems he takes effort to downplay this. Southgate Station suddenly rose to power since Hadron joined it. There is no record of Hadron Tanner prior to him joining Southgate Station, and all attempts to trace back his history have failed so far. It is suspected that Hadron Tanner is actually just an alias. Not his real name. Browse Anomalies? Siphoner Man! Siphoner Man! Recently acquired information mentions the existence of a Siphoner Man. Several sources vaguely describe it as a bipedal humanoid creature, highly intelligent and according to one source even capable, be capable of using language. So far no proof of its existence is available. That's a lie. Every single Let's Play that does the arena has a, has 
video, video evidence of this creature existing. But the increasing number of such claims from unreliable sources should not be ignored or treated as a hoax until more information can be acquired. No further information is available. Project files? Project Arc. Participants Oleksi Makar, Wit Nosek, Najord Abbott. Locations Panacea Lab, which is where we were. Little is known about this project aside from that it is most certainly dealt with human life longevity research. And Project Arama. Purpose unknown. Wit Nosek and Najord Abbott were the only two people to work on it. Phenotype dynamics? What is only Wit Nosek worked on this? What is known? is that this project dealt with using mutagens to dynamically change phenotypes of a living being in its current mature state. It is also known that much of the controversy that surrounded the Hollow Earth incident is related to this project. I think that was the creation of Chort, if I recall correctly, but I don't really know. Let's use our keycard. Surely this won't go bad for us. Actually, let's exit first and save the game. And then do this, because... It'd be kind of funny if we use a key card and it, like an alarm goes off because the only way any Aziz key card would be used here is if someone had pickpocketed off of him. It'd be kind of funny as a trap, but I don't think it's going to work that way. Let's see. Use key card. Use the key card to increase access to level 3. Done. All right. Maximum access level achieved. What's the personal files like now? Oh, wow. We have quite a few more people here. Oh my goodness, viewer. So far, I'm, I'm doing, I'm holding up pretty well, cough-wise. But I think we'll just read about maybe two more people from the normal list. Uh, let's read about Gorski. His name is Yevgeny. Yevgeny Gorski Zolernowich. That sounds like he's from the, uh, the same place K uh, Kokoshka's from. Yevgeny Zolernowich, Chief of Security, Southgate Station. Yevgeny, Yevgeny is almost exclusively known by his alias Gorsky. The origin or the meaning of this alias is unknown. Isn't Gorsky the name of a video game? No, I think about it. I think I played that game. Gorsky 2? It was a really weird Russian game involving mutants in a, in a junkyard. You were, you were part of a team that went there to... Uh... Actually, I don't know why you went there. I remember being really crazy. The creatures were really, really weird. It was a long time ago. It's a turn-based game for combat. Anyway, he was a member of a number of gangs in times before the revolution in Core City. Shortly after the revolution, he left Core City and eventually ended up in Southgate Station. Gorski is well known on the streets of Core City and other lower underrail communities of the South as an audacious fighter who rarely backs down. It is suspected that Gorski was trained but as a professional soldier in his youth, but it is uncertain where he would have gotten this training. Saul attempts to link him to Biocorp security forces return negative results. Gorski still maintains contact with a number of minor factions of Core City, most notably the Zone Rats. We'll look up... Francis White, the other member of Aegis Incorporated. Big Frank is his alias, owner of numerous companies, North Under Rail, exact location unknown. 59 is his age. He is a successful businessman from North Under Rail and the owner of numerous but mostly small businesses. The largest one being Aegis Incorporated, a security company from North Under Rail, of which he is a co founder and co owner. He was born into a poor family and lived most of his life on the rails, traveling from one place to the other. He worked various jobs over the years. <coughs> Until he finally started his own electronic store in Hexagon. His business proved lucrative, allowing him to gradually acquire other small businesses and properties. Even though he has never achieved the status of a business magnet, he is nonetheless... I probably got that word wrong. To be one of the most successful businessmen in North Under Rail, and a true example of a rags to riches success story. He has seven children with Sheila Bagady, former a former personal assistant and now wife. Contrary to, his nick, contrary to his nickname, he is of a rather thin build, or as Kenneth Kramer, a dissident journalist, described it, rather ghoulish. Oh.
Oh. Oh, Big Frank is his alias. Okay, to me, but to try to link those two together. All right. Oh no, we're not, we're not done. Browse BioCorp files. Oh man. Uh, old BioCorp. <laughs> oh come on. Sorry, viewer. I I can't do it. We'll go back and read this later. Anomalies. Only cipher a man. Okay. Okay, there's some information there. I would love to read it. I, I can't, viewer. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Let's, uh... I'm gonna have to cut the recording, actually. I come back and record when I'm feeling a little better. I'm sorry, guys. Um... When I come back, we'll be probably in Upper Underrail. Uh, sorry, Upper Core City. And I'll be making my... Uh, we'll see... Actually, can... Can we infiltrate the uh, manor, or uh, is that not what we do? Since we took the quest, things may have transpired now. Hmm. I think Tim, you need to break no matter what, even though you want to keep going. So here's what I'm going to do, viewer. I'm going to cut the recording here, and I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to walk around Corsa City and look to see if I can find someone there who might be able to uh, help us find Wit Nussek. Actually, it would be John the Beautiful might know where he's located. So we'll talk with him and look around to see if anything new has happened in Corsa City. If it's going to happen, I'm guessing it's going to be... Either it's going to be by the elevator when we just walk in this building, we're going to see someone there, or it's going to be at the bar. They're not going to place someone that we need to speak to in some out-of-the-way place. We'll also check the zone rats, just in case. Maybe we get lucky there, too. But we'll do that when I come back. I'm going to put a small cut here. but I uh, By small cut, I mean a few seconds for you guys, but it's going to be at least one day for me. So uh, I'll see you guys in a few seconds. Hey, everyone. I am back. I'm going to chat with you guys briefly about off-topic stuff before we talk to whom I think we need to speak to in order to gain access to the manor next to our residence, or uh, next to the Praetorian Security in particular, which is where I believe Nit Wosek is located. Or, sorry, Wit Nosek. <laughs> Let's not do the uh, pig penis thing here. <laughs> it's been a week since I recorded viewer. I ended up going into the hospital for COVID uh, last week, a week ago, a week and a day ago, and was fed IV antivirals and antibiotics. I might not have needed them, but I was glad to have them. COVID did some things COVID does to certain people. It gave me, in particular, lots of blood clots, which I still have in me. And my blood medicine I'm normally on has been increased so that I just don't kill over and die should any of these decide to break free and go to my heart, my lungs, or my head. It's, uh, it's a bit worrying to be home, you know. No one, no one else is here, and I could drop dead any second. But it's not likely to happen as long as I remember to take my medicine. <laughs> Lovenox shots. Lots of... We love relaxing I suppose just being fed this the fluids via IV drip and quite a few of them at that quite a few problems as well unfortunately but nothing too serious other than having blood clots in me it's something I've had in the past I had a DVT that almost killed me actually it began breaking up and going into my lungs I suffered from pulmonary emboli or pulmonary embolism this would be some 20 years ago now just about Actually, was that right? 14... 16. 16? 16 years ago. My goodness. Seems like just the other day, too, to me, that I had that blood clot in my right leg. In any case, I think for the first part of this video where we had left off, I had planned to walk around Core City and see if I could find anything new. It occurred to me that I had seen Sophie here in the past, at the end of the game, 
and I don't believe she is related to be you beating the game. She's related to you taking the Oculus Quest, and sure enough, here she is after we've taken the Oculus Quest. Now, I remember talking with her before, not with this character, but with others, and she's a bit tricky to navigate her conversation tree with. I don't want to mess it up, so if we get it wrong, I might reload, uh, just as a heads up. I also remember from one character who had done this before a long time ago that we need some sort of pet with us. I went out to the Black Sea to try to get a crab, but I couldn't find any in the places I had explored with you guys with my jet ski. There wasn't very many uh, areas to explore there, but I decided not to do any farming and turned around after killing a few sea serpents. I grabbed a borer from Foundry because I think she's going to ask to see something from us in the form of a creature such as this. So a heads up that I have done that as well off screen. Um, I think that's about it. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk with Sophie. You approach a girl in her late teens. It is easy to notice how much she stands out of the drunken, shabby crowd around her. Expensive clothing and jewelry, neat and orderly hair, gentle hands with colorful nails, meticulously done makeup, all of which are being held together by a sur... sur... sur I can't pronounce this. Sir Piccolo's attitude? It seeps from her dull gaze, which probably used to looking down at people, lazily crawls up your body to meet your eyes and to reveal her utter boredom. Hey, Zoner. Sup? My remembrance of this is don't hit on her. She is a late teenager, which means she's legal. <laughs> But there's none of that in our future. Not that I, not that Tim would do this anyway. So we'll be polite, but not flirty with her. I'm not a zoner. I'm Tim. Whatever. You all look like zoners to me. Anyway, I'm Sophie. So what do you want? We're not going to say two, because I'm worried that she's going to take it as if we're hitting on her. So we'll say one. What can you tell me about yourself, Sophie? I'm bored. Thought I was a gonna, like, have some fun here, but no, it's duller than watching mushrooms grow. She makes a brief pause, watching it with some hidden intent. Then her eyes widen as she expresses her demand. Amuse me, zoner. Oh, which maybe she wants to be flirted, well, not flirted with, but she wants to be entertained. Amuse you. How would I do that? Do I have to do everything? Think of something. You're the zoner here. What usually amuses you? I'm hard to amuse. She drifts off into deep thought and remains silent for a while. You open your mouth to say something, but at that exact moment she turns to you and speaks again. I've always... I was always fascinated with monsters, you know. Proper monsters. Weird, spooky, menacing. I had some old books which my dad gave to me when I was little, and they had illustrations of, like... Some of the most fascinating creatures I've seen, she sighs. Uh, I wish I could have my own monster so I could, like, unleash it on people who bore me. Well, we have a borer. Check this creature out. Show the captured borer. She takes a long look at the creature as if hypnotized by its odd appearance. That's gross, but kind of cool. Actually, very, very cool. What is it? It's called a Cymorph. Creature that can fuse with whatever it desires and turn it into a part of its body. The ones I saw in Foundry had shells made of hard rock and metallic spikes on its back. Hard freaking core! Just... Just hardcore. I want it. I want it now! I'll call him... Uh, something cool. Eviscerator. No. Gore worm. No. It's at this point that I don't remember which of these is the correct answer. I think asking for a price is not something I want to do, so we'll be polite and just give it to her and see if maybe she'll be polite back and say that we can visit her at the manor, which is where I think she comes from. 
sorry for all the metagaming, but this is... I'm, I want you guys to realize what's going through my head at the moment and why I'm making the choices I'm making. Because this is an Oculus Quest, which means we can mess this up. <laughs> if you like it so much, take it. It's yours. Hardcore. Thank you, Zoner. You made me think better of your kind. I'm going to take him home and give him some hardcore name. She pauses for a second, watching you. A moment passes, and a product of her thoughts gets presented. Hey, Zoner. Uh, want to join me? Why not? Where do you live? The Tolosky Manor. <laughs> In case you didn't figure it out by now, I'm Sophia Tolosky, daughter of Vlatko Tolosky. I'm sure you heard of us, unless you're a real zoner. She laughs. We haven't heard of them. <laughs> Maybe John the Beautiful has, though. Our mansion is in the residential area, yeah. It's just by the Praetorian Security Building. I'm going there now. If you want to see me in Blood Eater. Uh, nah, still not hardcore enough. Uh, anyway, if you want to come over, feel free to do so, she smiles. Goodbye for now, zoner. I might stop by. See you, Sophie. Hey, alright, that went really well. It can go really poorly, talking with Sophie. If you hit on her, if I remember correctly. I was surprised, because many of the flirting options in this game are ones where I feel you're being sympathetic. Like, not ov overtly flirtatious. Or I want to joke around with people, as I normally do in real life. To make them smile or laugh. But people generally take that the wrong way. Which I suppose is probably, probably pretty accurate in a situation like this, where most people are out for themselves. And it's a very vicious world. Uh, Alright, let's talk with John the Beautiful first. And see if he can tell me anything about this family. Hey, pal. Got some food ready? Hey, John. I need some specific information. That's what I'm saying. Prepare some food and let's get started. Do you know anything about a man called Wit Nosek, also known as Thallo? Thallo, Thallo. That sounds kind of like... Like Talosky. Yeah, like the Talosky family. You know, the ones who live next to the Praetorian Security Headquarters. Oh! That information costs me one bottle of root soda, which I like to have now. Uh, I don't have one on me. Sorry. I'll bring one later. Don't forget about it. Hey, John needs some brew. It goes well with mushroom stew. I get it? It rhymes. And I like food, so... I know you get it. You're not that stupid. I changed my mind. Nothing at the moment. I'm disappointed and hungry. Alright, see you around, John. That was interesting. Oh, I understand. We got the information for free from John, by accident. He didn't mean to say that to us until we had the, the soda. If I come back here with soda later... Actually, there's some at the bar. I'm willing to buy a soda for John, just to verify the information that, that he just gave us. Hey, Gene. Oh, Gene, what can you tell me about the Talaski family? Oh, the Talaskis are hardcore players here in, Har in Core City. Absolutely, mate. You won't be messing around with them. The head of the family, Vlatko, has earned himself serious connections with the Chief Knight of Historian Security. I know him personally, let me tell you, that man is a successful businessman. His daughter Sophie comes here from time to time. So seems like a really spoiled brat to me. Harriet! Don't let anyone hear you say that, shh, my love. Let's see what you got. Alright, so I want one of these. Yeah, 17 bucks is good just to have some verification. Well, it's not verification. It's a, it's just a sh random statement he made. But I think he's correct. I'm going to give him a root soda for it. Hey, John. Oh, we can't. Okay, we can't. By the way, you'll note I'm not talking with John about Sneaky's relationship with him. I think it makes him sad. And I don't want John the Beautiful being sad. He's a, he's a, he's a good kid. Always a bit hungry, but still a good kid. Hi, right, viewer. So, I guess we'll talk about something random for really quick while we go up to the residential area. Uh, we'll talk about the hospital stay for a little bit longer, because why not? Because that was something that happened to me. So, during my stay, uh, I had picked up this st a Steam Deck, a OLED Steam Deck, and I'm surprised how addicting. It is to do nothing but play video games for an entire day. Here, I tend not to do that. 
I tend to try to break up my day to do things around the house, do chores, go out walking, and get some miscellaneous stuff done. My free time between those things, whenever all those things are done, is spent trying to record or play games. But I'm trying to do other things in my life besides that. Seven days of sitting in a bed, getting fed IV medicines, and doing almost nothing but playing games was quite different than what I'm used to. The games the Steam Deck plays are mostly keyed to playing twin stick shooter games for me, as I'm not like an FPS person who plays with a gamepad. So it's things like, say, what, what games did I play? Dome Keeper, Loop Hero, Black Skylands, and some other, uh, some platformers. Unreal. Oh, sorry, no, no, un unepic. What else? Oh, a few other things. Uh, Axe and Verge again, and so on. It was fun. I'm glad I sprung for it, too. It was very expensive, but I can see myself using that Steam Deck in the future when I'm at the hospital for potentially my last consolidation therapy. The guard signals for you to stop. Excuse me, sir, this is private property. State your business here. Oh, sorry to bother you. Goodbye. Before we go in, I'm probably going to want my stealth outfit with me. So let's go back to our house. We didn't invest in stealth, and I'm a little worried this is going to be rather difficult. We don't have any persuasion or any uh, social abilities, so we're not going to be able to sweet talk our way through any uh, getting past security there either. I actually don't know what we're... What are we doing here, by the way? Locate former Biocorp res researcher Wit Nosek, dead or alive, and find out what it is he discovered while working on the ARC project. We don't have any hacking or the like either, so if it requires us accessing a computer system, that will be difficult. Unless our pickpocket can get us into a, get us a card. I have not looked this up, by the way. I do not know anything else besides what we have just done, and that was that Sophie was someone who I think could get us into the manor. But I've never walked into it. So this will be a first for me. Okay, our food's about to expire, so let's have... K-popper steak. This is in case we get to do some sleuthing. So our siphoner, heavy boots, balaclava. I think I'm using the right term there, right? Sleuthing is the right term for poking about in places as like an investigator, which we're not. We're gonna do with the spear. <laughs> oh, which reminds me, I did kill a few sea serpents. How's my spear holding up? Could use a small repair. I am curious what even the Hux key is like, if, if I can manage to do this successfully. I've never had it, and I've not watched someone else acquire it nor utilize it. I'm assuming it's a permanent item, similar to our jackknife, but it's used in the miscellaneous slot, similar to our lockpicks. But I don't know. I've never gotten it on any character. I just skipped the Oculus Quest because by the time I'm doing it, I've already beaten the game and all the D and the uh, Black Sea DLC. Ah, there's a back way up into the manor too, if you want to stealth your way through. All right, well, let's talk with the manor guard. May I help you? What is this place? This property belongs to the Talowski family, and access to the general public is strictly for prohibited. Unless, of course, you've been invited by one of the family members. In which case, you have to give me your name, so I can verify that you're on the list. Do the owners of this place offer any type of work? I'm looking to earn some coin. I'm afraid not. Anything else? Can I come in? He pulls out a mobile, mobile computer. Your name? Tim. He taps the device a few times before speaking again. You're on the list, which means you are free to come in. Welcome to Tolaski Manor. One word of warning, though. Your movement is strictly restricted only to the first floor. Unless specified otherwise, getting caught anywhere else in the manor will have serious consequences. Enjoy your stay. Okay. 
Now, I'm surprised. If, if they'll let me walk around with weapons drawn, I am going to be very surprised. And they are. I will say this one thing about Underrail, and that is that I feel more areas should do what the Embassy does and make you unequip all your weapons and hotkeyed items, your QWERTY items down here, for example. Because that would... They wouldn't let you walk into this manor with weapons equipped and gear ready to go. They just wouldn't. So, I feel like it would be best if... Well, I just said my piece. Anyway, here we are. Let's, uh... I've never pickpocketed any of these people before, so that means it's the first time. And we get an armory key. And 17 bucks off this guy. Hello, guard. Enjoy your stay. Thank you. Also enjoy what's in, ever in your pockets. Keys, preferably. 26 bucks. I'm not intending to fight. Because I think we will probably go... Yeah. If we fight, we gotta kill every single person inside the manor. And I don't want to do that. Well, let's go to the places we're allowed in. Only allowed on the first floor at the moment, so we'll stay there. We can learn any guards' patrols or where the guards are standing, I suppose, as well. There is a ventilation shaft here. Which we're not allowed to interact with. We are allowed to inter- Oh, hello. Did you come downstairs? You weren't here before. Okay, so we have some patrolling guards. This guy came from downstairs and walked upstairs. Take his lockpick and his money. This guy's watching the staircase. And we'll take his adrenaline shot. Oh, he goes upstairs. Probably the best time for us to get into the vent shaft is right now. Or at least open it up. There we go. I don't think they'll care that it's opened. Bathrooms. Two of them, no vents. Drilling! That's a great name for him! Hey, Sophie, I like the name! That's adorable! Aww. I really want to get, get a crab for her and see if she was interested in it. I wonder if... I think in the past, I've gotten one of the cyborgs from down in Hollow Earth for her. I don't know if she says anything different if you use, uh, if you bring her that. I'm guessing she does have different conversation topics depending upon the pets you bring her. Hey, Sophie. Let's save the game in case this goes poorly. Sup? Hey. Did you name your little pet? Yes, I did. I was thinking about all these hardcore names. Nothing sounded... Hardcore enough. Then it hit me. Literally, the creature hit me with its drill head thing in the leg. Drill leg. Drill leg. So I named him Drill Leg. She laughs. Drill Leg, say it. Drill Leg. Drill Leg. <coughs> <coughs> the way you roll the R makes it sound evil. She laughed with a sinister laugh. Nice. What well, can you tell me about the Tulowski family? I don't know. Like, that's a successful businessman. He earns loads of money, and we've got, like, this big mansion in the best part of Core City. We've got our own security, which is hardcore. But Dad's also good with Chief Knight, so, like, Patrician security keeps us safe wherever we go. Oh. What about your other family members? I don't really feel like this is a good to topic to talk about. She's a teenager, but we'll ask. Um, Mom works together with Dad, and so does my doofus brother, Maxim. Grandpa also lives with us, but he's always upstairs doing his crazy things. This old man stuff I seriously do not care about. Hmm. What can you tell me about your brother? Uh, don't ask me about him. He works with Dad, helps him run the trading business, or better yet, helps him run the trading business. <laughs> you know what I mean, Zoner. He's all about finding excuses to, like, get off work and either visit the arena, or hit on every girl that walks beside him with some stupid pickup line. And the lines... They are so lame. She already told us she seriously doesn't care about her grandfather, so we'll say goodbye. Now, does she have anything new on her? And by that, I mean we're checking her pockets. 
she does not. I picked off a mushroom brew, which is why she has a little bit of suspicion when she was at the, uh, whatchamacallit. Oh! This is where, I guess, you would climb up and down from the back of the manor. Uh, the refrigerator is allowed. We're allowed to go into the fridge. What's in the fridge? Food! I'm not gonna take her food, although I want to. So we're not allowed downstairs, and we're not allowed upstairs. We've explored all the places we're allowed in at the moment. Once we go in here... Okay. Gotta be careful now where we pop out. So in the end, I, I guess we're stealthing through this after all. A ladder. Alright, so let's get on our stealth equipment. This itself is dangerous putting this on because we lose all that amazing armor that we uh, create, that we had. We have my stealth, uh, my cloaking field. We're going to probably want a stealth field. We're going to, what's it called? Cloaking device. This all leads back to Sophie's room. Okay, yes. Yeah, so there's nothing here for us. So let's go upstairs. And we're going to stealth ourselves as well. It is so, still so weird for me to not have Interloper when I'm playing a stealthing character. Something else I wouldn't mind for in Underrail is if there were cameras or some other defensive systems in some of these ventilation shafts. I don't, uh, and yes, I don't even know if these, uh, right now viewer, I'm just gonna walk around and open every single shaft I see up here. And then we can stare outside of one of them or two of them. I guess we don't need to be stealth here. Okay, so that was it for this air, for the stuff for the events. Okay, what do we have out here? Vladko. Okay, the actual gentleman who owns the manor. He's in the brightly lit room, and there is a hackable door across from him. So we are not going to be able to get to. We're not get. We're not reaching that. Did I bring any dynamite with me? I do. Okay. We just lost limited to probably increment because I unequipped my uh, psionic headband. Must be the brother's room. Oh, movie room, I guess, for the family. Pop in here first as we peek around. Big monitor. You look at this big monitor and imagine how it would make you look in your living room. And also these stealth dust, so let's get quickly back in the vents. We know someone walks upstairs. I want to make sure they don't walk... Okay. In front of us. There's a vent over there. No other vents around. He's armed with goggles and a sniper rifle, so his perception and his detection is probably very good. Let's check out what I'm guessing is the brother's room next. I'll take a advanced electronic repair kit. You can have his. You can leave. His, you can have his bullets. I'll take a desaturated inhalant. Some money. We now. I'm gonna le let him keep the money. And that was it. There's no way we're crossing this room. There's no way. Maybe we can get into this other room. Or one of those two. Locked.
It is always a bit weird that you can open doors and no one seems to react. But I'm also glad they don't. Oh, no, no, no. Don't interact with that. Please. I don't know where the guard is that patrols up here. So we're just going to wait here and watch for him. I'm assuming he walks down the hall here. And he did gain some sus some suspicion. But it was still green a green eyeball. Let's go. I'm assuming it's locked. You know what we could have done? We could have used my uh, end end of spying endoscope on some of these doors. But we, I guess we don't really need to. Foot locker. Nothing in it I want. This desk. More coins, more mushroom brew. Oh, this is interesting. I thought this would lead in the other direction. Oh, maybe this circles around to uh, past Vladko into the room he he's standing near. Yes, we're going to stay stealth. I'm sorry, viewer. I know it's annoying to watch me walk so slow. Okay, we should open the vents since guards don't react to such. And if we have to get into a vent very quickly, I'll be glad to have them opened. This must be the room. There's not going to be anything over here, but that little bit of... Fog of War is going to annoy me to no end, viewer. So we're going to walk all the way over here and get it, get rid of it. Okay, I don't see anything. Let's pop in. Some low, uh, mid-quality... Components, plasma cores. I'll, I'm going to take the plasma cores because I can use those to make other stuff to sell for cash. A decent electroshock generator. We can make a taser out of that. A key card. Attic key card. That must be this door. You know, viewer, this is also the first character I've made where I actually made a stealth outfit for him. Most of my characters, I would never do that. I just keep wearing the armor I was wearing just pass on quests that I felt required stealth because it's not their thing. But we don't know where that guard is located. Uh-oh. Okay, his, the grandfather's up here. Whatever is, I'm putting it in my pocket. We're not going to be able to sneak up on him. Let's go back down. I'm assuming he doesn't walk downstairs. We could try talking with him. I don't know if that's going to work very well. We have no wasting persuasion or intimidation. I'd rather not fight him. I guess that's what quick savings for. A large waste pack. Shelves in the desk. Whatever is this going in our pockets. I 
wonder if we can pick his pocket. I don't think we'll, we'll be able to, even with the stealth field enabled. Now, what do we get from up there? Precognition. We'll learn that. And force emission. Precognition is now... It's, a, it's an ability that improves your dodge and evasion when it's equipped, I believe, and activated. We might start using it. Okay. Let's talk with him. This, you know, old man shuffles across the room, muttering and going about his business as if you're not here. The rampant DNA fraying. It's not accidental. It was not a mistake. Secrets hidden in these long branches. Are you with Nosek? The name rings a bell for him, and for a while he seems to focus on your words more intently. Thallow. Thallow. Of nature and order. And of long strands of madness. I need to know what you discovered working on the Ark. We do not need to know anything. Madness is in the long strands. I think he's talking about DNA. Who is the man asking me to travel down the spires? My name is Tim. His mind seems to drift away again. What terrible secrets. All right, discovered on the Ark. It's me. Your... It's your boss. Biocorp is still waiting for the results. With his voice filled with hate, he spits the words through his teeth. His eyes are lowered to the ground, and his hatred doesn't seem to be directed at you, but rather some invisible enemy. Murderous dogs. I don't owe you anything. The secrets for the long strands are not for the selfish, cannibalistic... Bloody rat hounds. He calms down, his thoughts stray away again. The architects were afraid of their creations, deep in the genome. Look, the latent self destructive code. We gotta we got we got somehow get through the navigate the, the conversation viewer. I'm gonna guess every, every single one that I'm gonna choose is gonna be wrong. It's me, your assistant. No, no, you will not trick me again. Okay, uh, name's Tim, as you've sent me? No. They call me Adam? There never was Adam. What? Uh, six again? I said Adam. Okay, that's it. That's every single one of them, and none of those were correct. Were correct? Three? Okay, that's it. All right, so... We are unable to get any information from him. I guess he doesn't care if we interact with what's around him. Let's hope Pickpocket gives us something, otherwise we're going to have to reload the game, viewer. Nope. He just has an adrenaline shot. And some blueprints we don't care about. Alright, that's it! Uh, so, we have to choose where his assistant, not we come from Biocorp. Do we reload, or do we just say we failed the Oculus Quest? Because a part of me feels like we should just say we failed it, because we did. But I guess for all you viewers at home, we'll reload and do this correctly. with Nosek, the Ark. Uh, it's me, your assistant. Oh no, he says you will not trick me again. Maybe we... No, we have to be able to solve this. Maybe we... Okay. So none of these are correct. Really? Then the only other thing I can think of is that we need some other information first in order to, dis to talk to him about this stuff. Let's go back and talk with Sophie again. All 
Oh, we gotta go down this way. He equipped him. Maybe we can get some information from Sophie about what he's working on. That's a good name for him. Sophie, what can you tell me about your grandfather? You want to know about my grandpa? Actually, he's my great-great-great-grandfather. Something like that. He's, like, older than Underrail itself. Look, I'm bored. I'm definitely not telling you about grandpa. Are you sure? Hmm... Well, I don't know where else to go. We could go downstairs, maybe find the brother's room, but we have no hacking to access, like, a computer system or the like. We picked up the attic key. Hmm. I don't feel like we need to go downstairs. Let's see if this gives us any other information. Maybe, maybe though we can't do anything here. We have to come back, say, after we actually do deep caverns. That would, because we'll probably gain more information there. We didn't miss anything. There is what's inside this room, but Vlack doesn't look like he moves at all. We could set some dynamite down someplace out of the way to pull them all out of the rooms they're in to get into this room. All right, let's wait and make sure the guard's not over here. So I didn't talk with him yet. Excuse me, sir. Just checking all your things again. Yeah, there's nothing up here that's like a key card or the like. What did he, what did he have on him again? Just an adrenaline shot. Oh, he probably needs an EpiPen. Oh, it's too late. We took it from him. All right, so if we talk with him, he goes about his business as if we're not here. What terrible secrets, what glorious history in those long spirals. Are you with Nosek? I need to know what you discovered working on the Ark. This is all the same stuff, and we know none of this works. He says it's me, your assistant, and he says you will not trick me again. Maybe instead of reloading, we should have asked him about all these results and then talked with Sophie again. Who is the man asking me to travel down the spirals? It's me, your assistant. No, no, you will not trick me again. Murderous dogs, I don't owe you anything. The secrets for the long strands are not for the selfish cannibalistic bloody rat hounds. The architects were afraid of their creations. Deep in the genome, look, the latent self-destructive code. All right, so that's, that's basically all the information I think we're gonna get from him. Let's go back and talk with Sophie again, and see if she'll say something different. I really don't want to, like, kill everyone. <laughs> that seems... Rather lame to murder a family for an Oculus, and an Oculus probably wouldn't want that either.
If there's no new topic here, viewer, I'm not gonna know what to do. Nope. Okay, there is nothing. Uh, Alright, I'm out. Of, I'm out of options. I do not know what to do or how to pro how to get the conversation to go any further. Uh, is there a vent shaft I'm missing? Stop. Don't interact with that while Sophie's present. I don't think there is. I count three there. Oh! I count three there, but only two here. So this vent shaft leads someplace else. But there's no way we're getting into that vent shaft. Unless it's this one that leads someplace else. It's not. Hmm. I don't know how to make Sophie move away from where she is unless I plant some dynamite. And that's not going to be enough time to get into that vent shaft. And she'll see us right by here. Let's see where she goes next. She's probably just going to go right back out and look over the balcony, but maybe she's a bit random with where she patrols. She's not. Maybe she doesn't notice us do this? If she's facing out over the balcony? No, she does. Okay. I'm, I'm not killing her. I refuse to do that. So, viewer, in my opinion, I just give up at this point and say, nope, Oculus Quest is not for us. I don't really want to look. I would like to figure out on my own, but I don't know what to do. So, um, we either need her. She's either. I'm going to cut the recording. I'll be, I'll be back after I watch her for a bit and see if she actually does move into any other different position. I somehow don't think she does, though. I think she just goes back and forth from standing there to out on the balcony. And I can't do anything out here without her noticing. Because she's still on my screen. If we had maybe persuasion, we could maybe get someone to say something to us. But we don't have that skill. Yeah, she doesn't go anywhere else. Oh, well, hold on a second. I'm being really dumb. We can stealth and try to open this fence shaft, assuming Drillig doesn't bump into us. Stupid. Right, I don't have to be unstealth to get into a vent. I'm totally going to take a uh, bacon cheese sandwich from you. I don't know what was going through my head right there. Yeah, we can be stealth and maybe open this up. She is out there for a decent amount of time. The issue really is Dreleg stopping us from uh, cutting across the room so quickly. Oh, she might see us. Right, let's do it. Yeah, with the cloaking field, she won't notice us do this at all. Now, where does this take us? To the other side of the door that the main guards are watching over. Looks like a storage room of some sort.
Locker and shelves, and that's it. Oh, the armory. Nothing really worth it in here. Nothing worth it. Nothing. It's not. It's not worth it. Okay. So that's all of those vents effectively checked. Where does this other vent go that's out here by the stairs? Quick at this. Oh, okay. We have another path that might lead us someplace else. Doesn't look like it will. Stairs down. Okay. Well, we... I don't know if we've been up all the way upstairs. I think we have been already. Let's check what's down here. Maybe we can gain access to a computer terminal or something. That will give us more conversation options with Grandpa. Seems like this is not the right place to go. But we'll open the vent. Ooh, Cave Hopper, uh, this is definitely not the way we want to go. We'll open the vent, though. But that's that's a bunch of stuff waiting to bump into us and make us visible. So we don't want to go that way. That was way too close. I can't pop out and pick his pocket because I'm not going to be able to stand right next to him, even with his cloak field enabled. Okay, he's going away. Just supplies, nothing else down here. Oh, there is that double door. Where are you going, you worker? Since the door's not open, I'm assuming no one goes in here. Oh god. Uh, a cook. And this is probably just a dead end. Oh no, there's a there's a vent shaft back here. I feel like we're going we're working our way to the other electrical uh to an entryway that would have gotten us into the building though. And not really we're not going the right way. Yeah, this is outside. Okay. So, did we miss a vent, but can we talk with the father? I don't think we're allowed to just speak with the father if we pop into his room. All right, so they have, basically the, the animals down here are food for, uh, for the family. Okay, let's just reload the game. It'll be faster than me walking back here. Alright, so I got nothing, viewer. If walking through the room with Vlaco and trying to speak with him just activates combat, then I am done. And we will not do this quest. I do not know what to do. So let's, uh... I guess we're going to climb out here. Okay, good, just missed that guard. There are no other vents up here that I have missed. Uh, 
uh, we want to, if I want to talk to the father, then we need to get into one of these vents to get to that vent. I have a hunch this is the wrong thing to do, viewer, but I'm out of ideas, and there's no conversation topic for us to have with, with, with Wit. We've already gained all of the, Unless I'm supposed to go back to the Epony Lab, or, uh, sorry, Panacea Lab, and now look at the information that gives me something to talk to him about. Nope, starts combat. So... Maybe the order in which we... Do that lab matters. All right, well, we're done here, and we've been playing for another 30 minutes here, so I'm going to stop. I will thank you guys for watching. We didn't get a whole lot done in completion of this quest. I don't know what else to do. So maybe we sent the information back from the Panacea Lab a little too early. That's the only thing I've got. And if that's not right, I don't know what else to do. So we're going to head back to the Panacea Lab. I'll do it off screen. Yeah, I'll do it off screen. And I'll be back here after it is completed. And we'll try talking with Grandpa again. And if nothing else happens, then I'm just going to throw in the towel and say, Nope, uh, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. And or we don't have the skills to do it. So uh, thank you guys for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.